Good evening, and uh, thank you for joining us. A Lubbock mother hopes she can raise enough funds to buy a headstone for her 12-year-old son's grave. Jordan Rosales is buried at Lubbock's Rest Haven Funeral Home in Memorial Park. As we first reported in July, a 13-year-old is accused of shooting Jordan. He is now charged with manslaughter. KCBD News Channel 11's investigative reporter Shaley Kidwell has new details in tonight's juvenile justice report. Balloons, birthday notes, friends, and family. The only thing missing from this 13th birthday party is the birthday boy himself. I never thought I'd be visiting him that way, going to the cemetery, visiting him. No one expected to bury a boy full of so much life and with so much life left to live. <laughs> And while they now have to come here to talk to Jordan Rosales, they send their birthday wishes closer to where they say his spirit still lives. Big sister Alize Rosales says she feels Jordan's presence when she's awake and she sees him when she's asleep. My grandma tells me all the time, whenever you dream of him, he's right there next to you. But for Jordan's mother, Isabel Morales, bedtime is the toughest. I start to see him a lot in my head, you know, of how he left here. And I don't want to remember him that way. This is the memory she wants to replay. The face she wishes she could see when she closes her eyes at night. Last Christmas, she planned a surprise trip to Arlington. So Jordan could watch his favorite team play. Like he was lost for words. He didn't say one word, not one word, but drop a few tears and just hit his face under his shirt. He started crying. And I said, you're going to go see your, your boys play. Isabel says she's a Steelers fan, but that day she prayed the Dallas Cowboys would win. When they lose, he cried, but I was like, man, they're at the game. They better not let him down. Just praying, I'm like, please, please don't let my son cry, please. The Cowboys won. He hugged me. He said, that was the best Christmas gift ever, Mom. Shortly after Jordan's death, the family received this letter signed by Jerry Jones. It says, Jordan's support humbles us and is an inspiration that goes beyond the game of football. The letter goes on to say, we are grateful to have played a small part in Jordan's life and appreciate his legacy for the enthusiasm and love of our team. Why would anyone take the life of this 12-year-old boy? It's one of the many questions Isabel wants to ask the 13-year-old charged in Jordan's death, the young teen who she says brought a gun into her home. What was he planning to do with the gun? Like, what would, why did he even bring it to my house? Isabel says on Tuesday, July 11th, Jordan was playing a video game in his bedroom. Isabel says a few of Jordan's siblings walked into the home along with two friends, who police have identified as a 13-year-old and a 12-year-old. Isabel says she knew the older boy pretty well. He's been coming around a lot. He stayed the night every night, basically, at my house. She says that day... The 13-year-old asked her a strange question. He said, hey, um, do you have any plastic gloves? And I told him, I said, uh, the only plastic gloves I have are the ones under the sink. And he pulled out, like, I guess, a couple of gloves. She says all of the kids went to Jordan's room where he was still playing his video game. Moments later, she says she heard a loud bang. All the kids ran out the room except for Jordan. Isabel says when she ran into the room, she saw a bullet hole in the television and her son covered in blood. And I looked at my daughter and I said, who shot him? And she said, he did. Isabel says her daughter pointed to the 13-year-old who had already started to run. Isabel says she called 911 as Alizé pulled Jordan from the chair and held him. She had him in her arms through it all. Like, she was trying to stop the bleeding and she said, mom, when I did that, he was already gone. She was like, he just looked at me. I was the person, I was the last person that he looked at and he was just staring at me and then he just closed his eyes. Isabel says Jordan was facing the television, so she doesn't think he even knew the boy was there, much less that he was armed with a gun. And it just took his life unexpectedly, like he didn't, he was just playing his game and he was playing with my nephew on FaceTime, so of course his phone was right there, so my nephew seen everything behind him. She says it all happened so fast there was no time for a warning. Isabel says she hopes this was an accident, 
because she says an accident would be easier to forgive. As they wrestle with unanswered questions, Jordan's family has found a sense of peace through the messages Jordan brings them in their dreams. And he grabbed me by my arm and pulled me in and hugged me and he said, I miss and I do love you, Alizé. And I started crying and I told him, don't go yet. And he was like, I'm sorry, you know. And then he went and God took him back. Back to a home, they say, is far better than here. Since the suspect in this case is a juvenile, the majority of information is confidential. We do know he is charged with manslaughter, trespassing, and possession of a stolen firearm. Just days before the shooting, a man reported to police that someone broke into his vehicle and stole his gun. Police say the 13-year-old used that gun to shoot Jordan. The teen remains in the Lubbock County Juvenile Justice Center. Isabel is selling t-shirts and hopes she can raise enough money to buy a headstone for Jordan's grave. The family also has a GoFundMe account. We have information on how to donate with this story on our website, kcbd.com. Karen and Emmer. A Lubbock teenager charged in the shooting death of a 12-year-old appeared before a judge today. The proceedings took place in a courtroom at the Lubbock County Juvenile Justice Center, and that's where the boy has been since his arrest in June. KCBD News Channel 11's investigative reporter Shaylee Kidwell has followed this case since the beginning. She was at today's proceedings. Shaylee? While we were allowed inside the courtroom today, the majority of the proceeding must be kept confidential because the accused is a minor. For the first time since Jordan Rosales was shot and killed, his family faced the boy who pulled the trigger. While their lives will never be the same, they tell us they have forgiven him. He got the whole world and he Jordan Rosales has always loved to sing. His grandmother, Norma Martinez, says he learned some of his first songs at church. I've been taking him to church since he was three. He loved going to church. I dressed him up real cute. She says Jordan made quite the impression. My pastor told him, you know what, Jordan? I feel when you grow up, you're going to be a pastor. At 12 years old, Jordan still loved to sing, a voice Martinez misses. I went to the cemetery and I laid on his grave. I told him, Mijo, remember you used to sing to God? Do you remember you sang this song? Grandma's going to play it right now. And I played it, and I was singing the song to him, <laughs> my heart out to him. Martinez says as she walked into the courtroom today, she felt an indescribable heaviness, but also empathy for the boy who stood before the judge. I felt like I wanted to go to him and just give him a hug. He's just a kid. He's just a little kid. Jordan's mother took the stand today, and in her victim impact statement, she said in part, you learn a lot in this life, but no one could ever teach you how to survive this life without your child. She went on to say, I pray justice for Jordan by the hands of the judge. You are forgiven, but you will never be innocent. Jordan is in peace. Jenny Simpson is chief of the juvenile division at the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office. She cannot speak specifically about this case, but says juvenile offenders who commit serious offenses can receive a determinate sentence. It allows us to give someone a set number of years. That depends on the level of the offense up to 40 years. You'll see sometimes with younger offenders who haven't really been involved in the system receive a determinate sentence probation. How do you get through days like today? You know, I have a great support system and you know it's it's great that you can go and talk about how crummy your day was and what you know you had to see and what you had to do. Justice looks different in every case and sometimes justice is not what you or I want to see in a case, but it's the right thing. Today's one of those days. Martinez didn't give a victim impact statement, but there's something she wants the boy who took her grandson to know. I forgive him because I know Jordan will want me to forgive him. She says her family will now work to move forward, and today was a big step. The whole world in it Shaylee Kidwell, KCBD investigates.